time preparing Paul uh, for the letter to a young scientist. And I thought it would be appropriate to uh, present it on the basis that I have had extensive uh, experience in teaching counseling sciences across the broad array of fields. And you might like to hear some of the principles that I've developed in uh, doing that, that teaching and counseling. So let me begin uh, by urging you, particularly you on the youngster side, on this task you've chosen, to go as far as you can. The world needs you badly. Humanity is now fully into the techno-scientific age. There's going to be no turning back. Uh, although varying among disciplines, say astrophysics, molecular genetics, immunology, microbiology, to public health, to the new area of the human body of the symbiont, to public health, environmental science, knowledge in medical science, and science overall is doubling every 15 to 20 years. Technology is increasing at a comparable rate. Between them, two already pervade, as most of you here seated realize, every dimension of human life. So swift is the velocity of the techno-scientific revolution. So startling in its countless twists and turns that no one can predict its outcome, even a decade from the present moment. There'll come a time, of course, when the exponential growth of discovery and knowledge, which actually began in the 1600s, has to peak and level off. But that's not going to matter to you. The revolution is going to continue for at least several more decades. It will render the human condition radically different from what it is today. <clears throat> Traditional fields of study are going to continue to grow. And in so doing, inevitably, they will meet and create new disciplines. In time, all of science will come to be a continuum of description and explanation of networks of principles and laws. That's why you need not just be training in one specialty, but also acquire breadth in other fields related to and even distant from your own initial choice. Keep your eyes lifted and your head turning. The thirst for knowledge is in our genes. It was put there by our distant ancestors and spread across the world, and it's never going to be quenched. To so understand and use it sanely as a part of the civilization yet to evolve it requires a vastly larger population of scientifically trained people like you in education, medicine, law, diplomacy, government, business, and the media that exist today. Our political leaders need at least a modest degree of scientific literacy, which most badly lack today, no applause with uh, It will be better for all if they prepare before entering office rather than learning on the job. Therefore, you will do well to act on the side, no matter how far into the laboratory you may go uh, to serve as teachers during the span of your career. I will now proceed quickly and before else to a subject that is both a vital asset and a potential barrier to a scientific career. If you are a bit short in mathematical skills, don't worry. Many of the most successful scientists that work today are mathematically semi-literate. A metaphor will serve here, where elite mathematicians and uh, uh, statisticians and theorists often serve as architects in the expanding realm of science. The remaining large majority of basic applied sciences, including the 